right, thanks for watching and hey doll, welcome to IKEA. Because today we would like to find the smallest surface area of a box whose volume is a thousand cubic centimeters. And this is a Calc 3 optimization problem, which you'll see soon is very similar to the regular Calc uh, Maxman problems. So here again, what do we have? So we have this box, it's a derivative in a box with dimensions x, y, z. And we would like to design it in such a way that it has the smallest surface area. And the first order of business is to find a multivariable function with that, you know, that represents that surface area. So step one. Well, what is the surface area of a box? It's just 2xy plus 2yz plus 2xz. And now here's the thing. You could do this problem okay, with the two. But here's the thing also. If the surface area is smallest, then half of the surface area is also the smallest. So equivalently, what we can do, we can just minimize xy plus yz plus xz. And by the way, of course you could do it with Lagrange multipliers, and that will be the point of another video. But today we will just do it the classical way. Now, here's the only issue. Well, this is a function of three variables. Ideally, we would just like to have two variables, but there is one thing we haven't used yet, namely the fact that the volume is a thousand cubic centimeters. And this will allow us to eliminate one of the variables. So the volume of a box is x, y, z, which is a thousand. So assuming nothing is zero, because you know a very thin box wouldn't be helpful, uh, we basically get that z equals a thousand over x, y. And the nice thing is this new piece of info you can now plug this into this uh, surface area, you know, modified surface area, to get x, y plus y. 1,000 over xy plus x times 1,000 over xy. Now the y's cancel and the x cancels. And finally, what you have is, in fact, a function of two variables, which we call f of xy. So f of xy is just xy plus 1,000 over x plus 1,000 over y. All right, and then our goal is to uh, minimize this. Okay, and for this, so step three, I, I think step three or step four, one of those, yeah, step two. <laughs> ne neither of them, okay. So step two, what we wanna do, we wanna again minimize this, and for this, just like in single variable calculus, where you had f prime equals zero, now we wanna find the critical points, which now, instead of f prime, we set fx equals zero, and fy equals zero. Now, the x derivative of this is, I believe, just y minus a thousand over x squared, which you said equals zero, and you get y equals a thousand over x squared. On the other hand, fy, that becomes, I believe, x minus a thousand over y squared, simply by using partial derivatives, and you set that equals zero, and then you get x equals 1,000 over y squared. Now, here it seems that you stuck, but you're actually not, because we also know now y in terms of x. So all you have to do, you have to plug y into this formula. So what we get is then x equals to 1,000 over y squared but y is 1,000 over x squared squared. And if you flip this, you get 1,000 times, I believe, x to the fourth over 1,000 squared. And then this simplifies, and you get x to the fourth over 1,000. And remember, this equals x. So what do we have? Essentially, x to the fourth equals 1,000x. You can... Simplify the x, so you get x cubed equals to a thousand. 
But remember, a thousand is just 10 cubed. So essentially what you get is x equals 10. So we get x equals 10, but then what is y? Well, remember, y is 1,000 over x squared. So now it becomes 1,000 over 100, and that's 10. And so y equals 10 as well. So 10 and 10, and in particular, you are the perfect 10 because the critical point is 10, 10. Oh, like 10, 10. <laughs> 10, 10. All right, so that's one thing. And now the next step is to apply the second derivative test. And remember, so I think now it's step three. No, in, in single variable calculus, essentially, if you have f double prime is negative, we have a max. If f double prime is positive, we have a minimum. Here it's slightly more complicated because there are actually four uh, second derivatives of f. Because remember, fx is y minus 1,000 over x squared. fy is uh, x minus 1,000 over y squared. But the issue is, again, here we have four partial derivatives, which is fff, ffff, fxx, fxy, fyx, and fyy. So let's calculate this. So if you differentiate this with respect to x, I believe you get minus 1,000 times minus 2 over x cubed, so 2,000 over x cubed. fxy, that's much easier. The derivative of this with respect to y is 1. fyx is the derivative of this with respect to uh, x, which is also 1. And by the way, Clairaut moment, it's a clear Clairaut moment, fxy equals fyx. So it's a good way of checking that your answer is correct. And here, similarly, we get that fyy uh, is 2,000 over y cubed. All right, and then what you have to do, so careful, you don't have to do it at any point. You just need to do it at the critical point. So at 10, 10, you have to evaluate this weird determinant d ten ten, which is simply fxx, fxy, fyx, fyy, but at the point 10, 10. So 2,000 over 10 cubed, which is 1,000. 1, 1, 2,000 over 1,000, which becomes 2, 1, 1, 2. But now the determinant, I think it's 4 minus 1, which is 3, which is positive. So if it's positive, if it's positive, it already means it's not a saddle point. If you found negative, you could have said just simply saddle point. But because it's positive, it's not a saddle. And to figure out if it's a max or a min, you just need to look at this first entry, with this, which is fxx. So f of x at 10, 10 equals 2, which is positive. And just like in single variable calculus, where the positive second derivative indicates minimum, this also indicates that 10, 10 uh, is a minimizer. So in other words, f has a minimum at least a local minimum at 10, 10, which turns out to be a global minimum, just kind of because of the shape of f, if you want. Um, I know, a very uh, non-rigorous argument. So we get that, in fact, f has a minimum at, so I think step four, f has a minimum at x equals 10, y equals 10, and technically, now you can already find a smaller surface area but let's be lazy and clever, because what is z? It's 100 over xy, so 1,000 over xy, which is 1,000 over 100, which is 10. And then the surface area, remember, is 2xy plus 2yz uh, plus 2xz, which now becomes 200 plus 200 plus 200, and that's 600. 
So the smallest surface area you can find is 600 uh, cubic centimeters. Mm -hmm. So uh, s square centimeters, it's a surface, sorry. Uh, all right, but we're not done because, well, this is kind of the uh, numeric answer, but more interesting, look what we found. We found that x is 10, y is 10, and z is 10. So in fact, x equals y equals z. So it turns out the optimal, uh, sorry, the optimal box is actually a cube. And this is very important in nature. Kind of nature balances itself out until you actually get that the sides are all equal. So it's perfectly balanced as things should be. And that's why next time you go to Ikea, you'll see, if, if you see that kind of the optimal box is a cube, remember that, okay? Because it's not just to make it pretty, it's really to make it as efficient as possible. Okay? So it's kind of math, it's not quite useless, so it is pretty useful. All right, if you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.